Hi guys, we're in a new section now, avoiding forced attacks, which is section 4 now. And in 4.1, we're going to look at hash brute forcing. We'll take a look at hash brute forcing, hash cat, form brute forcing, and hydra. So in this video, we're going to be looking at why you should not use weak hash algorithms. We're also going to look at brute forcing weak hash types. And we're also going to look at consequences of brute forcing. So hashing passwords, basically hashing allows us not to store plain text passwords in the database. It allows us to give a different value to put within a database which could be correlated towards that password. Weak algorithms like MD5 and SHA-1 can be decoded trivially and so I absolutely advise no one to use MD5 and SHA-1, even with SALTs. So constant research into new hash types and technology is advised by me. If you're creating a web application or whatever application you're creating, it's always best to upgrade to whatever you think suitable. Don't go into a technology too fast if it's fairly new. Look at papers and make a informed decision. Research heavily into new technologies. New PHP versions support bcrypt well, which I favour and I think people should use. Salting can aid in dictionary attacks if correctly implemented. And I'll be talking more about these in detail later. So the developers have accepted that some parts of the system is vulnerable in average shop script and have decided to use the MD5 hash algorithm to hash the password that's given to them in the register and also the login process. So what it now does is it checks if the hash is correct within the database. I've got a password set as test, a very simplistic password I know, but it's just for an example. And I've also got the username test entered here. So I've just copied um, the hash to hashkiller.co.uk, which is a popular site for decrypting MD5. And we can see that it has found it as test. And what hashkiller.co.uk has done for us is it's basically done all the work for us. It's basically used every single possibility it has within its cracking sort of process to find a valid um, plain text word or combination of words or pattern to successfully decrypt it and give it the plain text. So what it's it's got here is it's found test. Now test is a very generic term, easy to use. So in word lists, which I will talk about more later, would have included test as it's a very easy generic password that a lot of people use. And they've correlated the hash between the plain text and found that these two are the equivalent of each other. So it's basically done it all for us and then it's searched its database of current decrypted MD5 hashes, which is at a large amount at, the, at this time, and it's found that yes, they have cracked this hash and it is test. So that is what brute forcing is, it's finding every single possibility be it a word, a pattern, or whatever. And what it's done in this instance is it's gone through its database of de successful decrypts and it's it's given us it. So in this video, we've looked at the concept of hash brute forcing and we've basically seen that it's searched for different patterns, be it a word list or a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols. And it's found that one hash, which in our instance was the test MD5 hash, is in correlation with the plain text test. So at some point they've said, search the MD5 for the plain text um, test and it will come back with that specific hash. And they've kept that in a database saying, this is what this is. And people are now able to retrieve that information and find out that yes, it's test. Also, we can now realize the potential consequences that may occur within brute forcing. So if they have this information, they could potentially log in as an administrator if they've decrypted a hash password that was an administrator's, or they could get to another level of access that they potentially couldn't get to. In the next video, we're going to be using Hashcat, and we're going to be cracking passwords by ourselves without the aid of hashkiller.co.uk.